What's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today I'm rocking it out with uh, my partner in crime, the one and only Lane Boland. He's the director of enrollments with Mortgage Marketing Coach. For those who don't know, now you know. And uh, Lane, what's shaking, brother? How are you feeling today? That's another Thursday. Just uh, front lines of capitalism. Yes, another thunderous Thursday. Here we go. And speaking of the front lines of capitalism, we're going to be talking today about the suck of being average, the suck of doing it the hard way and, uh, you know, grinding on the front lines, getting bludgeoned, you know, showing up to that proverbial gunfight with a butter knife, unequipped and ill-equipped. What are some of the symptoms of what that looks like and what that feels like? Uh, We're going to get you guys reacquainted with the muck and mire of treading through the mud with concrete blocks on your feet, doing it the hard way. Uh, so that, you know, hopefully it can stir up some what I would call holy discontent. We're going to rattle your cage intentionally today to awaken you to the fact that you don't have to continually stay in this cycle of suck. You don't have to inflict yourself with this unnecessary suffering. But before you change reality, it is mission critical you face your reality, which means let's get real with the pain and the suck of doing it the hard way. And the pain and the suck of being average. And even if you're doing better than average in terms of volume and income, if you're scratching around in the chicken yard with the chickens when you know you know you're born to be an eagle and soar like an eagle, there's a problem. There's a pain in that. So we want to awaken you to the pain of scratching around in the chicken yard with the chickens when you know you're born to be an eagle and soar at a much higher level. So this should be fun. Uh, you can, uh, you know, thank us in advance. You're welcome in advance. This uh, <laughs> proverbial <laughs> kick in the nuts is uh, precisely what you need. It's called positive pain, positive perturbance. Right. And uh, let, let this be some tough love that you guys need to hear because we care, because we want you guys to rise up and win. So, Lane, let's talk about it, shall we? Do it. Yeah, so let's dive in and just talk about some of the things you're on the phone with uh, well-intended, well-meaning, hardworking, uh, exquisitely talented mortgage professionals on a daily basis. You see the plight that they go through on a daily basis intimately. Let's talk about some of the symptoms we see uh, and hear and feel as we get connected on the front lines with these, uh, you know, these beautiful human beings who are doing the best with what they know. On the front lines, what are some symptoms you're seeing in terms of the the suck of being average on the front lines? Yeah, uh, not being able to establish a, a crystal clear connection between your your time put into the business and the results you get out of it. And and what I mean is, yeah, if you wake up every day not knowing where your floor is going to be, wondering where your next deal is going to be come from, that's symptomatic of doing it the hard way and thereby being average. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, some of you guys might be listening to be like, how could that be? We got the lowest rates ever. I'm making more money right. than I ever have. You know, what are people complaining about? But we see people on the flip side who are literally buried in refis and have more business than they can okay. deal with. And they have another end of the spectrum, spectrum in terms of the pain and the average of suck or rather the pain of suck and being average. Uh, not average in terms of comparing to others, but average in terms of comparing of to their full capacity and the fullest calling of what they're capable of. So let's speak to that moment on the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. The, 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 the other, the other uh, uh, symptom I'm seeing is, yeah, if you're working harder and, and your results aren't, aren't geometrically improving. And what I mean by that is, you know, you've got to the point where, you know, if you're putting in 60 to 80 hours a week and you're not making surgeon money, that's symptomatic of doing it the hard way. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe you're making half a million a year, but you have no life. You know, right. you, you got a big jelly roll. You don't have a six pack. You got a you got a cooler. Uh, you feel like crap because, you know, your back is molded to your chair. You got the office yep. ball and chain around your ankle. You got a big thumper headache because all you're doing is in the minutia, putting out fires and dealing with uh, reactionary, you know, fireman type of task, putting out fires all day, dealing with right. lo- loan level issues. And right. you're making great money. But if you're honest with yourself, life sucks. You got a headache yep. every day. You're annoyed every day. You're aggravated yep. every day. You're stressed out every day. And it's just draining your battery. 
That right. is a symptom of doing it the hard way. If you're not in flow, if you're not having fun with fulfillment, there's something wrong, friends. There's something very wrong. So uh, let's talk more about you know the consequences of the consequences when people are doing it the hard yeah. way. What sort of uh, symptoms do we typically see, but also what are the symptoms underneath those symptoms that really impact their experience day to day and what it feels like to you know walk in their shoes on a day to day basis? Yeah, uh, first and foremost, if you feel like you're you're watching your your kids grow up through Facebook, and yeah. and and you have a roommate relationship with your spouse. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. you're basically, you know, utilitarian, dry bones, uh, yeah. dry as a desert, you know, living parallel lives, intimacies down the toilet because, you know, you never see each other because all you're doing is in the office. Right. Um, she wants to have connection and fun and you're just grinding slaying dragons nothing wrong with that but you know that can take its toll on a marriage there's no doubt about it especially if you're all stressed out and burnt out and you're running on fumes and that's all your family gets at the end of the day is fumes yeah. and then of course it compounds with feeling the guilt and the shame of wanting to be a better father or a better wife a uh, better husband a better uh you know you know all those different roles right better but a better mother better wife better husband better father and you're wanting to you know your family deserves better from you and so then that compounds that feeling of shame or guilt that they deserve better but you're not able to deliver it and then you know there's all kinds of ramifications in terms of like you said walk, watching your kids grow up through social media feeling the guilt and shame of that um not you know here's the biggest thing when you don't have time freedom and you might have tons of money, but you're poverty stricken with the thing that matters most, which is freedom of your time to right. be able to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want. That's that's true riches. That's true wealth. That's true prosperity. And if you don't have joy in your heart, now you're really poverty stricken, right? Because at the end of the day, who cares how much money you have if you don't have joy and peace and freedom, right? It's just like, sure, you got all that money. You can buy a bunch of toys, but you don't have time to enjoy the toys. You don't have the you don't have time to enjoy the toys with anyone in your life that you care about either. So we, we see that kind of problem. What other kind of uh, symptoms do you see on the front line? Yeah. Look at the uh, you know the cost of and the cost of average. You know, if 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 you've ever looked at somebody that is effortlessly killing it and in at orders of magnitude above you in terms of compensation or or freedom. And and it, it pisses you off. Like, how is this this person's no smarter than me? How are they pulling this off? And and what am I doing? That's like uh, exhibit A. You're doing it the hard way. You are average. Yeah. Yeah. So you make a great point there as well in terms of, you know, let's be real. Uh, for high achievers, for high performers, there's a part of us that wants to win, and there's a part of us that wants to be the best. Maybe not because we we want all the accolades on the stage, although we won't turn that away. We all love recognition. Most people sure. will die for it. Baby, babies will cry for it. Recognition. We all love recognition. Um, but there's also that sense of like watching someone else live your dream. You know, watching someone else who's no better than you, no smarter than you. In fact, you know, what really pisses you off and when you see they're a complete asshole or they're a complete numb nut and they're kicking ass, taking names, chewing bubble gum, crushing it, doing double, triple, quadruple your volume. They're just slaying it. And you're like, what the heck's wrong with me? Why can't I figure this out? Why the heck are they kicking ass? And here I am just slugging it out, grinding slowly up the mountain. And it feels like it's watching paint dry, watching someone else live your dream. That hurts. Not because you don't want someone else to win, but because it's the co comparison or the contrast of shit. Why can't I figure this out? This out, mm -hmm. you know? Why can't I get this right? So yet another symptom of doing it the hard way. Because the truth is, they're no better than you. They're no smarter than you. They just have better marketing and better leadership and better systems. Chances are, and th those are all learnable skills, by the way. Yeah, those are all learnable skills. You don't come out of the shoot when you're born with a PhD in leadership and a PhD in marketing and a PhD in delegation and team building. That, those are all acquired skills. And that's a big reason why people come to us for help is to learn the secret sauce on how to thread those needles. It's not something you generally just figured out on your own, nor is just figuring out how to solve the Rubik's cube on your own, something that comes easy. Generally speaking, that's called doing it the hard way. <laughs> you know, and, and, and Dorn, you brought up an interesting point and, 
know, if you, anybody that sat through an economics class has heard there's no such thing as a free lunch. Yeah. You know, yeah. Meaning, meaning everything's got a cost. Everything's got a price. So, so you know, your success, your freedom has a price. And you're either going to pay it to the tuition of not knowing, uh, and, and, and that's going to come in the form of time and cash, time being worth more than cash because you can never replicate it. And, and, or you, you, you make a bold strategic investment yourself. Either way, you're going to pay the price to go where you want to go. It's just the manner in which you want to do it. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of Jim Rohn. He's got a famous quote, the uh, late and great Jim yeah. Rohn. He said, you're going to pay the price for success either way. You're going to yeah. pay the price of discipline or you're going to pay the price of regret. Yeah. Discipline weighs an ounce, regret weighs a ton. Yeah. And so it's the the heavy weight of the simple error in judgment of knowing what you need to do to invest in yourself, but not doing it, knowing that you need to step up your game in terms of attracting top producing agents, but not knowing how to do it, not willing, not willing to invest in yourself to get the recipe, the blueprint, the plan to acknowledge, to actually do it. So there's a cost of either the discipline, the simple discipline of acquiring the skill or the knowledge or the know-how, or right. there's the simple error in judgment, which is basically a, a lame ass excuse why you can't or why you won't, which keeps you stuck in the muck and mire, spinning your wheels in yep. stagnation, going nowhere or banging up against that glass ceiling of your leadership lid, right? Your leadership yep. lid is the lid that you bang up against, not knowing how to best lead yourself, not knowing how to best lead others, not knowing how to best attract top producing agents to make you their exclusive without, you know, going through the hell of cold calling and begging and bribing and chasing. That's yep. what, we, what, that's what uh, John Maxwell, the leadership, uh, you know, leader extraordinaire, expert extraordinaire teaches the leadership lid and all of us, our results are a reflection of that leadership lid, mm -hmm. your results, whatever your best number is, whatever your best income is, whether it's this year or five years ago or 10 years ago or 12 years ago, that was bumping up against that leadership lid. And if you haven't, if your best year is, it wasn't last year or this year, that's a sign that you've been stagnating in you stepping up your leadership. So there are costs for that. Let's talk about some of the, the impacts we see when people start bumping up against that leadership lid and they start to stagnate. What are some of the symptoms you notice as you're speaking with more yeah. from coast to coast on that? Yeah, you know, if your if your results are 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 so predictable in the sense that uh, you know that that ceiling that you could set a watch to it, I mean, if if you have not, you know, if, if you look, if even if you look back at in terms of market cycles, if you aren't doing better now than where we were in the last market cycle, that's exhibit A that you're doing things the hard way. Uh, you haven't grown at all. Yeah. And a lot of you guys, you know, you're having the problem be softened by virtue of that rising tide that raises all the boats. Historically, right. crazy low rates. So right. we've got this rising tide raising all the boats. So it softens the problem. Those of you who have huge cracks in the foundation of your business, you're just, you know, whistling and uh, happy go lucky, right. getting fat and, and lazy. And, uh, you know, you're you're seeing the bank account stack in spite of all those cracks in your foundation, yeah. because, you know, it's like shooting fish in a barrel right now, especially for people who have been in the business for a period of time and you have a database. I mean, many of you, you got more business than you can handle. You're bumping up against full capacity. And many of you, you wish you had, you know, two more LOAs, two more processors and, uh, you know, uh, 48 hours in a day instead of 24 because there's just too much demand for what you're offering because everyone's wanting to refi and right. a lot of people are wanting to purchase too with these crazy low rates they want to get in before the rates go up but what it enables us to do as beings that tend to take the path of least resistance is to neglect and to drift and to mm -hmm. Uh, you know, compromise and get complacent on being proactive. They're yep. re, you know, reactive instead of proactive, which means you're working they're... in your business, not on your business. You're just in reactionary mode, putting out fires and just, you know, trying to take in as much business as you can. You're not being proactive to position yourself to prosper in the purchase market, where it, which is where the real sustainable, uh, reliable, predictable source of business is, not just short term, but long term. 
So you're not taking the time to hedge your bets. You're not taking the time to fortify your, your fort before the wind comes and the storm hits. You're just thinking it's going to be blue skies, lollipops, unicorns, and rainbows forever. I got a news for you. Everything that flows must ebb and everything that ebbs must flow. The tide cannot flow out forever. It's going to ebb. The question is when, not if. The question is when it does ebb back, are you ready? Are you positioned? Yeah. So let's talk about some of the symptoms we see in people that know in their heart that they're not being proactive. They know in their heart the storm is coming and they're unequipped and ill-equipped. And they know in their heart that if they don't get the, their shit together in the purchase market, they're gonna, their income's gonna tank and they're gonna get caught with their pants down. What are some of the things that people are saying as you speak with them in terms of some of the concerns that crop up around that? Yeah, you know, the big word I hear about is is anxiety. And it's not like mm -hmm. a monkey on your back all day, every day, but it's just one of those things that in a, in a, in a moment of, of silence, they'll start panicking because, oh my God, is this the big one where the phone stops ringing permanently? And, and, and so, yeah, anxiety is number one. Number two, apathy in the sense that they're so freaking bored uh, with their business uh, that uh, they, it's just like they're, 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 it's, you know, they're zombies and, you know, it's Groundhog's Day repeating the same thing over and over and over again, just right, trading right. time for money. Uh, but yeah, just apathy and, and, and anxiety are, are two major, 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 like subconscious signals to your conscious self that, hey, uh, this isn't right. And uh, we, we, you know, if we're not growing, we're dying. We got to do something. Yeah. And then, of course, there's a self judge inside of our heads. It's like, yep. you should be doing better. You should be doing Good. more. Yep. Right. You should be further ahead. You should be working on your business, not in your business. You should be more proactive. You should yep. be getting ready for the storm. You should be yep. getting more partners on board. So we end up shooting yep. all over ourselves. Right. Yep. Shooting all and, over the place. Yeah. And then that's a heavy weight. So not yep. only do we have the heavy weight of the anxiety and the stress, but then we have the heavy weight of the the shooting all over ourselves beating ourselves up right and the, the blame and the and the and the shame and the guilt that comes with that and yep. then on top of that there's almost uh you know a critique voice around that apathy too like i should not be apathetic but i, I kind of yeah. am i shouldn't be complacent but i am so then you beat yourself with a stick about that as well right yep. and then on top of all that it's this foreboding sense of you know, gloom that there's a precipice coming closer. Yep. And that precipice is getting closer by the day and you're still unequipped and ill-equipped. So that increases that sense of fear, that right. sense of foreboding forthcoming gloom and doom. If you know, you don't get your shit together. And then there's also that piece of boredom is a very low frequency, you know, yep. boredom is, is a frequency that comes when you're locked up in prison in solitary confinement. That's, that's like the ultimate pain they inflict upon a prisoner. It, it literally drives people mental. You stick someone in solitary confinement for a few weeks, they start to go nuts. Why? They're bored out of their freaking tree and that's all of it, they're just stuck with their thoughts. Now, obviously you're not on that level of extreme, but I say <laughs> that, I say that to, to speak to how boredom is this, you know, tolerable, it's tolerable or tolerable rather, that's, that's the Dornese version, tolerable, because, you know, I'm, I'm fancy like that. That's how we roll. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's tolerable, but at the same time, it's almost like, you know, the, the frog metaphor where you put the frog in hot water, it'll bounce out right away. But if you just turn up the heat just incrementally, it, and so it's just warming up one degree at a time. It'll never leave until it's dead. Exactly. You boil that sucker right in the pot and it doesn't bother to jump out because it's it's just bearable. It's comfortable and it's just bearable. And so you start to enable it and tolerate it. Tell yourself a story. Oh, this is a hot tub. It's not so bad. Next thing you know, you're boiling to death and you get to the point where you're like, I hate my business. I hate my life. How the hell did I get here? You got there one little incremental degree at a time by tolerating it. So we get into a habit of tolerating this kind of pain or cycle of suck. And that's why we're bringing this to the forefront and we're shining a light on it so you can see it. Because if we don't shine the light on this, we'd be remiss. Our mission, our mission is to liberate 
mortgage prof- professionals out of the, the dark mediocrity of suck into the radiant light of an extraordinary life filled with passion, purpose, and prosperity. And the one of the biggest things that holds people back is they're just complacent to it, right? They're complacent to it or they tell themselves a story that says it's not so bad. So let's let's talk about some of the coping mechanisms we see uh, yeah. when people are on the on the on the front lines that allow them to cope with you know this pain of suck. Yeah, yeah, I, I I've I've seen it in a lot of different ways, but the most common one is is uh, they 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 uh, almost feel like there's a merit badge for for grinding it eighty to ninety hours a week. Uh, killing themselves. And, and so it's like they, they learn to take pride in, in what's really a symptom of something being wrong. Uh, that's, that's number one, first yeah, and foremost. Yeah. 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 And it's like, you know, they'll, they'll even take it one step further and they own it as an identity. I'm a yep. grinder. I'm a workaholic. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like you say, it's like a, a merit badge, right? It's like okay. I'm a grinder. I'm, I'm a workaholic. I've always been that. And so now it's part of your identity. It's like someone who wants to quit smoking, but they keep calling themselves a smoker. What's the likelihood right. you're ever going to quit smoking if you see yourself as a smoker? Slim to none. Never. Yeah. No, yeah. it's not going to happen. So, you know, once you anchor to your identity and you speak that as your identity, now you're really up shit creek without a paddle because even though you know it's sucking the lifeblood out of you, you've owned it as your identity. Right. So that's, I mean, one of the big pieces of the cost of being average is you start to own these different elements of the, you know, the cycle of suck of, as who you are. But we got news for you, friends. The past does not equal the future. Oh. I mean, if you can have it the way you want it, would you really sign up for working 60, 70, 80 hour weeks? Something tells right. you not. Right. Oh, no. And- uh, another one, uh, I mean, another another symptom is uh, yeah, today I was talking to somebody who, when we finally got real, uh, we, we realized that she was afraid of, of actually dialing it up the way she wanted because she, she, she didn't know what she would do with all that extra time. And, and, you know, Jack Nicholson said that the way you kick one habits by starting another one. And, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, so, and that's also, I was like, all right, well, you know, is it possible you haven't even bothered to think about, you know, how amazing it's going to be when you got this right. And, is it possible that because you haven't thought about what you actually want, you don't know where you're going? You're rudderless. You're, you're, you know, the only thing worse than going in the wrong direction is going the wrong direction enthusiastically. I mean, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> so true. Yeah. And, and the biggest reason why people don't get what they want is because they don't know what they want. Yeah. Right? Articulate it, spell it out, and let's reverse yeah. engineer how to get it. I was talking to a lady through Facebook Messenger today, and she says, yeah. I don't set goals, I just do it the best I can. No, that's, that's, dumb. That's, that's like saying I don't I, I don't shoot at the uh, the hole in golf. I just shoot it anywhere I feel like it. Or right. you know, I, I don't when I play basketball, I, I don't bother shooting at the hoop. I just kind of spin around and uh, throw the ball blindfolded and hope for the best. Why right. the hell would you not set intention? Do you not realize you're a thought evolved being and right. you manifest based on what you focus on and what you focus on expands and you get to create your life and your business based on what you're focusing on. Well, if you don't right. have a target, if you don't have a plan, well, then any road will take you there as Chester, the, the Chestershire cat in Alice in Wonderland would say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Right. Right. So I asked her, I asked her, are you happy where you're at or are you wanting to grow? Now, if she says she wants to grow, but she doesn't have a goal, we got two conflicting ideas. Yeah. Very. How, how would you know if you're growing if you don't 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 measure it? No, you the the, it. the the uh, Stoic uh, school of, of philosophy in Rome had a saying that to a sailor that can't navigate, no wind is favorable. I mean, you're you're just stuck. Right. Yeah. And part of navigation is where am I now, and where do I want to yeah. be? Exactly. But we get this these erroneous beliefs lodged into our, our mental factory, and then we wonder why the end product at the end of the conveyor belt isn't what we want. Yeah, crap in, crap out. Yeah. If you're not happy with the outcome, look at the design of your process. Right. And chances are there's some erroneous presuppositions in there that are clogging up the gears that are causing to produce some shit results. Well, it's not that exactly. the gears are a problem. It's that the process has got some kinks we got to iron out. Once right. you, you know, so it has nothing to do with your capacity no. or your worthiness. 
no. you know, you're worthy of whatever you want to create in your life. It's not that you're not capable or worthy of making half a million a year, working 20 or 25 hours a week and having an epic life or a million dollars a year, <laughs> working 20 to 35 hours a week and having an epic life of freedom and impact and contribution and legendary legacy and yeah. joy and peace and fulfillment. It, does, it doesn't mean you're not capable of that. It just means that there's some parts of your process that are awry that aren't producing that outcome. The good news is it can be fixed. Bingo. The past does not equal the future. But as long as you keep tolerating a a shit product at the end of the conveyor belt, then you're going to continue to enable it. And the clients we work with are clients who just get to the honest truth in their heart. And sometimes it comes out of the dark night of the soul where they, you know, have to get their ass kicked on the front lines to the point where they just decide enough is enough. No more. I've had it. I'm done with this. Right. We call that the threshold of fed up, the fed up threshold where you decide this is freaking shit, man. I can do so much more. I'm capable of so much more. I'm called to so much more. Why am I tolerating this? Yeah. This thing called life is not a dress rehearsal. It's a one shot deal. Why am I tolerating so much crap in my life? And so and all that. Know, uh, yeah. un, un, until you learn to, uh, to to fear mediocrity more than failure, you're never going to hit that point. I mean, uh, yeah. I, you know, good is the mortal enemy of great, right? Yeah, good is always the mortal enemy of great. And you see that as a quintessential trait of uh, rock star professionals, rock star performers in any walk of life. Right. Is they've got this insatiable desire Excellent. to expand, to grow, yep. to become a better version of themselves, to excellence, to, you know, see how far they can go. You know, it's like that saying, you'll never find, if you don't risk going too far, you'll never fa- find out how far <laughs> you can go. Right. So, but they, they've got this repulsion to stagnation. They've right. got the propulsion to being quote unquote content and satisfied. Right. Not yeah. that there's anything wrong with feeling content and satisfied. There's nothing wrong with that. I would call that joy. I would sure. call that growth. I would call that having peace and joy in your heart, love in your heart. Yeah. But the, the problem with satisfaction and contentment, if you really let yourself slip into there and live that and have that be your zip code is that it has you start to sit on your laurels and grow moss and stagnate and forget that where the most joy is and the most passion, the most fulfillment is, is under the spout where all the good stuff pours out. That's called the growth zone. Yep. The growth zone. And that's the antithesis of being content and satisfied. Right. 100%. So so we've talked a lot about the cost of average and, you know, the, the cost of this cycle of suck of just settling for less than what you're capable of and what you're called to. We've talked about the, the stress of it, the boredom of it, uh, the, you know, predictability of it such that it becomes just groundhog's day every day. We talk about the shame and the guilt of it. We talk about the humiliation and embarrassment of it, although we could have gone deeper there, yeah. right? The humiliation and embarrassment of uh, knowing that, you could be a freaking rock star in your role, but you're just kind of being average while other people are kicking ass and taking names and on this, the, the, the living in the limelight of really living the dream that you want. And then especially for those who crash and burn in this business, there's a huge amount of humiliation and embarrassment around that. Having to stick your yeah. tail between your legs and defeat and failure and going back to the nine to five prison with an office ball and chain around your ankle, settling for a second best life, having friends and family watch you crash and burn. There's a hell of a lot of humiliation and embarrassment there. So, I mean, we, we've given you a pretty good buffet of bad, if you will, in terms of all the crap that comes with being average. And uh, at the end of the day, what it takes to be extraordinary is to have the right su- support, the right plan, the right blueprint, the right systems, and to get you equipped to win the right recipe and a white hot fire burning desire in your heart to do whatever it takes to win. You know, not just to say, I'll do it when it's comfortable, I'll do it when it's convenient, but it's like, I'm in it to freaking win it, whatever it takes. Have you found that to be true, Lang? Yeah, that's, that's the only way this is gonna change. That's the only way to set that up. <laughs> know, know where you are, know where you're going and, and, and get real with the problem so that you're pissed off to the point where you're not gonna settle for the, the, the current environment anymore. Yeah, not one more day. You've nope. 
officially hit the threshold called the fed up threshold, not one right. more freaking day. Right. So if you guys, if you're listening to this or watching this and you know, you've already hit that threshold and you're sick and tired of settling for second best in your business or in your life, and you know, you're capable of so much more, you're sick and tired of scratching around in the chicken yard with the chickens instead of soaring with the Eagles and having those wings actually be used to soar sure. instead of just being tied behind your back in the chicken yard and the dust, then we invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where you lift up the hood or rather we lift up the hood in your business with you. We have an honest conversation an honest chat with you around where you're at right now and the impact of that, but also just getting clarity on what's so in your business right now. And then we look at where you want to be. And if we can help you bridge that gap between where you are and where you want to be, we'll show you how to do that and what that looks like. If not, mm -hmm. Lane and I will both tell you, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services. Not everyone's ready to create a breakthrough and not everyone is someone we can help. So we will diagnose that and be honest with you about that. Yep. And either way, though, you're going to leave the call with more clarity than you've ever had in your entire career yeah. on what it really takes to create a breakthrough in your business. That yep. we can promise you. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you and you're a 100% commission mortgage professional uh, who is making 80 basis points or higher in their comp plan, you want to increase your income by at least $100,000 or more, and you want to be able to do it working smarter instead of just harder, book a breakthrough call. Go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Love so it. that's all we got for today. Lane, anything else you want to add before we sign off today? No, oh, sir. Just uh, start working smarter, not harder. You got it. At the end of the day, you can either keep doing it the way you've been doing it and keep getting it the way you've been getting it, or you're sick and tired of that, then you can learn how to work smarter, not harder. And at the end of the day, you're going to pay the price either way. You're going to pay the price of regret and a lot of wasted time, energy, and money doing it the hard way, or you're going to pay the price of investing in yourself and learning the secret sauce to go straight to surgeon money, freedom money, kick ass, and live the dream money without messing around, hitting all the landmines. Either way, you're going to pay the price. You choose. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging with us. This is Doran Aldana and the one and only Lane Bolin thanks. with the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Be blessed. We'll talk to you again very soon. Peace, y'all.